Let's take an example to understand Einstein's mass energy equivalence, a concrete example so that you guys will understand why the mass changes when particles come close to each other. So let's take an example of a hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom has a proton and it has an electron inside it. So if you don't think about Einstein's mass energy equivalence and I asked you what is the mass of a hydrogen atom, you would say, well, these numbers are given to us, so you would say mass of the hydrogen atom of hydrogen I won't substitute the values, the values are not important, the concept is important. You would just say it is mp plus me. But what you fail to notice is Einstein's mass energy equivalence, that energy itself has mass. The numbers over here that you have, when I say mass of a proton is so many amu, I really mean when I have a proton, an isolated proton and nothing else in the surrounding. It's only during that time that proton will not have any kinetic energy or potential energy due to any electric field or gravitational field for that matter. So when I say mass of the proton is so much, I really mean in the absence of any other particle in its vicinity. Similarly, when we say mass of an electron is so much, again we really mean an electron, mass of an electron when it is isolated, that there's nothing else in the vicinity, so that it, its potential energy cannot change. Okay? Now comes the question, what happens when a proton and electron come close to each other? So think about it. So let's consider the two systems. We'll consider a system where the mass, where the protons and electrons are infinitely far away. So system one is here. Here is my proton and here is my electron and these guys are infinitely far away. So. Okay, so infinitely far away. If they're infinitely far away, they're not going to influence anyone with their electric fields. And let's, let's also assume that their kinetic energy is zero. So K is zero and K is zero. I could now ask you, what is the mass of this system? Well, the mass of that system would be the mass of the proton plus the mass of the electron plus any additional energy. Well, they're not influencing each other, there is no potential energy, and there is absolutely no kinetic energy. And therefore the mass of the whole system now truly becomes mass of the proton plus mass of the electron. This is not the hydrogen atom yet. Okay, so this mass is mass of the proton plus mass of the electron. But now let's think about what happens when a proton and an electron come close to each other. So, if I let them go, the proton and electron will accelerate close to each other. The proton is massive. So, let's say the proton remains stationary. The electron comes, keeps accelerating towards, towards the proton. As the electron accelerates towards the proton, the proton's kinetic energy, as the electron accelerates towards the proton, the electron's kinetic energy increases, but at the same time, its potential energy decreases. Conservation of energy tells us that there is no net change in the energy. So we are still fine. The total energy is still the same as we had here before. No changes. But the thing is, an hydrogen atom cannot be formed like this. If an electron were allowed to come close to a proton like this, then it would just come very close and then it would get slingshot itself. So what would happen in this case would be something like this. We are treating them as classical particles, so no quantum whatever. So if here was the proton and the electron was allowed to come this way, it would just go like this and slingshot its way because it just gets too much kinetic energy. It will not be captured by the proton. In order for the proton to capture the electron, we need to remove some energy from the system. So what we need to do now is when the electron is coming close to the proton, maybe we can put some resistive forces, maybe we can put some medium, you know, so some resistive forces so we can remove some of the energy from the electron and so the electron slows down and if the electron slows down enough then it can orbit the atom uh, the proton then it can orbit the proton okay and if you study your Bohr's theory then you must know the numbers okay so when an atom is formed of hydrogen atom is formed so you have the the proton and the electron what you see is that the potential energy decreases because they're coming close to each other. It's, it's very similar to when a ball is get lowered. When the ball gets lowered, the potential energy decreases due to the attractive force. Same over here, due to the attractive force, the potential energy is decreasing. That, the decrease in the potential energy turns out to be delta U 
turns out to be, um, let's see, the change in the potential energy is 13.6 times 2. That's minus 27.2 electron volt. I happen to remember that number. And if you studied Bohr's theory, you should also remember that number. That's a famous number, okay? So that's the... That's the decrease in the potential energy. But hey, kinetic energy has increased. It was zero before, now it's orbiting. So yes, there is an increase in the kinetic energy. But the increase in the kinetic energy turns out to be just 13.6 electron volt. And therefore, if you add the two up, then you will see the total change in the kinetic energy is minus 13, total energy, total change in the energy is minus 13.6 electron volt. And long story short, when the electron and proton come close to each other to form a hydrogen atom, some energy has been removed from this system. If the energy is removed from the system, what does Einstein tell us? That energy which was removed actually had some mass. It was that mass that was contributing over here. But now you remove that much energy, from the system, you're not weighing that mass anymore. And therefore, the mass of the hydrogen atom, what do you expect? Do you expect it to be equal to this number? More than this number? Or less than that number? Please pause and you should be able to get this. Okay? Are you ready? It has to be smaller because you have removed some energy. And therefore, therefore, if you take this as our second system, this is the system 2, system 2 is our hydrogen atom, then we will see that mass of system 2 is smaller than mass of system 1. In other words, we see that mass of 1H1 uh, the hydrogen atom, not the nucleus, the atom, the proton and the electron together is smaller than the mass of the proton plus mass of the neutron. Smaller. And that's how, that's how things work out. I hope that makes sense to you. We will go to the nucleus eventually. But I think this was something you have already studied, so I thought maybe this would be easier. So we could now ask ourselves, hmm, so it's not just at the nuclear level, right? It also has, happens at the atomic level. Yes, it does. Why don't we study about that in chemistry? I mean, chemistry is all about hydrogen atoms and, and electrons going around and everything. And I'm pretty sure in chemistry you have learned that mass is conserved, right? I mean, mass and energy is still conserved. No, anyways, why don't we talk about that in chemistry? Let's find out. You see, we see that the, the reason the mass decreases is because some energy was removed. How much energy is removed? 13.6 electron volts. That much energy is removed. And so we can now convert that to calculate how much mass is lost. To do that, we need to use Einstein's equation e equals mc square, not in the usual units of kilograms and, and joules, but instead we'll use it in a different unit of electron volt and amu. So here's something, here's a conversion factor which you can remember. It turns out that if you plug in the numbers, uh, see, e equals mc square is telling us that one kilogram is equivalent to an energy of 9 times 10 to the power 18 joules, right? It doesn't mean that one kilogram can be converted to that energy. It just means that if you have that much energy, 9 times 10 to the power 18 joules of whopping energy closed in some system, it could be in any form, kinetic potential, thermal, whatever, any form, then that system would have a mass due to the energy of one kilogram. That's what it means. But now let's convert that into our smaller units. If you do the conversion, you can do that yourself. Then we will find that one AMU has a corresponding number of 931 mega electron volt. And there's a, some decimals out there. I'm neglecting those decimals. So this tells us that if you add 931 mega electron volts of energy into a system without adding any particles, the system's mass increases by 1 U. And similarly, if you can remove 931 mega electron volts of energy from a system, its mass decreases by 1 U. So look at the look at the thing, look at the number. It's mega, 
okay and look at the energy removed over here it's 13.6 electron volt is removed when 13.6 electron volt is removed the mass that it's removed is so incredibly small if you ask anyone what's the mass of a hydrogen atom we will even neglect the mass of the electron we will just say this number is almost same as 1.007 i mean who's going to take care of so many decimal places in general we don't do that not even in chemistry at least it is not at your level we don't do such calculations with so many significant figures and therefore this additional this loss of mass do we really need to factor that in because you will have of the order of 10 to the power minus 7 when you divide the two just just calculate so when 13.6 electron volt is removed from this system the mass decrease is so incredibly small that your chemistry teacher says let's forget about that so let's not even talk about it. it's irrelevant just imagine at the atomic level itself if it's so irrelevant what can you say about our macroscopic day-to-day -day life level it is even more irrelevant but the concept is there at every level it works however it's not relevant and that's why einstein said that for a long time we believed that mass is an indicator of the amount of stuff because the discrepancy of the energy is so tiny that we never noticed it but einstein did that's why he's an einstein <laughs> okay so long story short we this concept is not very useful in our day-to-day -day life macroscopic like even even uh, when you talk about atoms it's not very useful but we will see that once we go deeper into the nucleus now it becomes very useful so we'll eventually understand just like this how the nucleus when it comes to nucleus the mass changes and how nuclear force affects all this and how that changed the way we thought about mass and how how nuclear physics accelerated i mean we could use this concept and amazing things happen all right so i'm going to see you next time